here I am just wetting my paper. This is Fabriano 140 pound, 100% cotton paper. And I am adding in some raw sienna. I am using a large hake brush. This is an older brush and it isn't in the best of shape, but you know, you grow accustomed to the tools that you use regularly and I've not been able to part with it. I am using the colors I have on my palette. That pinkish kind of purplish color above is alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. And then I came in with an ultramarine blue and indigo. There's that word again. This is alizarin crimson mixed with a little bit of cobalt blue, I believe. That's what I have on my palette. I'm just playing around, coming in with Payne's Gray to add some contrast. I didn't realize this until the painting dried, but I forgot to change my water and I had been using gouache the day before to put in some waves on an ocean scene that I was painting. So you'll see the effect of that when the sky dries, but it's all good. And here I'm just tilting my board, the paper's still nice and wet, just allowing that paint to move. I sped this portion up just so you didn't have to sit here and watch me tilt for a good, I want to say I tilted for a good close to five minutes. Then I just took out my dryer on cool and just started drying it and tilting it. This is where I started to notice that the colors were kind of dull and I was so confused. So I assessed the scene and this is when I noticed I was dipping my hockey brush into water that had the residue from that gouache. But it's all right. It just looks like a kind of stormy sky, maybe late evening. So I decided to go ahead before the paint was completely dry, once I noticed that it was looking pretty dull, and tap in some clouds with a crumpled up piece of toilet paper. This sunset, sunrise, um, really needed some contrast. So, you know, you always reevaluate as you go and you add what you need to add. Um, it's just a very intuitive process. I'm just lightly dabbing, very, very light. The paint is still pretty wet. I took the dryer out, but I barely dried it and there was a lot of water on the paper, so I was able to do this. If you wait too long, um, you will not be able to remove the paint, enough of that paint, and there will be a lot of the paint from the first, from that layer showing through, from that sky showing through, and it just looks unnatural. So you really want to get this while it's still pretty wet, but not 
right after you're finished painting where the paint is still just moving and still fully saturated paper. Now I'm gonna grab my hair dryer and just hit it with some cool air on low because I wanna start putting my mountains in right away and this needs to be dry. Now I'm just gonna grab a round brush and I am gonna paint in that first layer, that mountain, and I'm gonna use a light, very diluted Payne's Gray um, that is cerulean blue. There's the Payne's Gray mixed with the cerulean, some indigo, It's a very light wash. We want this first layer, layer to be nice and light. And I try to use long, smooth strokes here so that the mountain has more of a uniform look and it's not choppy and um, there's not just big blobs of paint in there. I want this first layer, this first mountain, since it is farthest in the distance, to be almost transparent. I'm gonna dry that layer. And then I'll come in with my next layer, which will be the same colors, just slightly darker. And you can see here, because this first layer was so diluted that the colors from the sky behind it are showing through, and I like that look. We want it to kind of blend with the sky a little bit. I did the same thing with the second layer. Uh, the paint that I used for the second layer was more concentrated. It wasn't as watery. I used the same colors the Payne's Gray, Indigo, and a little bit of Ultramarine Blue. And I just made it slightly darker than the first layer. I apologize, I forgot to turn my camera on <laughs> while I was painting that second layer, but here you have it. Just try to shape the mountain different than the first. And for this final layer, I am using Payne's Gray. This time it's a little bit thicker, and I'm using Cerulean Blue. Just layering that on. I added a bit more of that Payne's Gray. My glasses fell off there. <laughs> so that's not some special technique. And then just bringing it across and over. Adding in some clean water. And drying it on cool. Uh, 
I'm coming in here with some raw sienna. This is wet on dry, but I will be adding in some water to get the paint moving. I'm just trying to establish the background here. This is going to be a distant field or a meadow. Now I'm coming in with a mix of French ultramarine blue, Windsor yellow, and a touch of alizarin crimson just to give me that nice olive color. and a little bit of raw umber. This is very light, very subtle. Now I'm gonna start adding some flowers in the foreground. My paper is still pretty wet and I'm just dabbing in little blops and blips here and there, <laughs> blobs, blops, and blips. Um, this is on wet paper, so it's going to dry significantly lighter and it's gonna be a lot more subtle. This is just to establish a background here for my wildflowers. I'm splattering here and there just to add a bit into that uh, the distant field there, the distant meadow, and also to provide some interest for our foreground. I'm gonna come in with some yellow. This is a Windsor yellow. And I'm gonna splatter and I'm gonna dab. And same thing I did with those first red flowers. Any red will do. And just dabbing in with some of that yellow. Now I'm going to add a bit of purple. This was already on my palette, so I don't remember the red and blue that I mixed for this purple, but just play around. There's no right or wrong here. Just dabbing it. Now I'm going to come in with that olive green color that I mixed. Just to bring some leaves and foliage and grasses in there. Finding any kind of white spaces or light spaces. I'm just kind of filling them in with the tip of my brush. Adding a bit of Payne's Gray 
for contrast, splattering. Adding some of that Payne's Gray to the olive green mix that I made and splattering some of that in. And I have a clean, wet brush, and I'm just going to blend some of those splatters that are in the background and adding a little bit of alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue mix, and some purple, a darker purple, and kind of blending it all together to give the impression of some distant flowers. some of that green, any green will do, a darker green. And I'm just going to allow that to blend and to dry. Now I'm going to take um, a dark green here from my Japanese watercolors. I'll link them below. And a little of that olive green. I didn't feel like mixing up new colors. I was a little stretched for time, so just using what I have in front of me and adding some stems for the flowers that I am going to be painting in the foreground, more defined, stronger colors. Adding a little bit of that raw sienna. Adding some larger patches here of grass. Now I'm just taking a card uh, that was cut into fourths and I'm just scraping out some of that paint to add some Highlights here, creating some texture. With grass, uh, just be sure you are scraping in all different directions. Okay, my paper is dry. And I am coming in with some red. Um, this is a red orange from my Japanese watercolor palette. Just being pretty random here. I'm just dabbing it in. Just dabbing some Payne's Gray and a little purple in the center of these, I guess they're poppies. I'm 
Now I'm coming in with some purple and just kind of creating um, some wildflowers here. And I'm doing the same over here with a bit of cadmium yellow. Adding a few more of those little red flowers and just some little odds and ends here. Nothing in particular, just tapping the paper, just dabbing it in. Splattering in some red orange now that the paper is relatively dry. I felt like I needed to add another layer to the mountains here, so I'm taking some Payne's Gray and just adding that in to make just a small little hill or piece of land here. Wet on dry, but I will be adding in some water as I do want to have a level of control here. I don't want to move too far into that meadow there. Dipping a larger brush in some clean water and just softening things up a bit. I don't want it to be too dramatic. Bringing some of that paint down. Now I'm going to drop in some thicker Payne's Gray at the base here. It's nice and wet and just allow some natural distant trees to form. I'm using the very tip of my brush, a pointed tip, and allowing that paint to move and create some trees. Again, some clean water. Well, I cleaned my brush and tapped out the excess water, and now I'm just running it along the base of that mountain there just to soften it up. I don't want it to run too much into that meadow there. And it hit the whole thing with that drier, low setting, cool air, and just let it dry. Now I'm going to do the same thing over on the right side here that I did on the left. I'm going to add in some flowers with some more concentrated paint. I'm using a red. Any red will do. Um, I did use two different shades of red. I like to do that just for some contrast even though these are so small. And I'm just dabbing them in randomly. I'm not even thinking about shape or direction. I'm just dotting it in there in random spots. Using a dark green. For me, it was Payne's Gray with that olive green color. But use whatever darker green you have. And I am creating some stems and grasses. And I'm just kind of connecting them 
carefully to the flowers that I just dabbed in. I'm using a small round brush for this with a very pointed tip, but you could use a rigger brush. Just adding in some purple in some random spots, very diluted, just to fill in some of that white space or that light space. And I'll come in with some green and just various colors. Just use the same colors that you used for the rest of the flowers and you can't go wrong. Dabbing in a bit of that cadmium yellow just for some contrast and just to make it a bit more interesting. Splattering in some of that Windsor yellow. There's still a little bit of the cadmium on the brush and that's okay. My paper is pretty dry with the exception of the flowers that I just added. So it will just add some nice contrast Coming in with a bit more of that Payne's Gray or any darker color that you choose. Now I am using a green. Now I am going to add in a tree and I have mixed raw umber and Payne's Gray. Um, the paint is fairly thick as you can see. I am dipping my brush in water and then just continuing on. I'm using a size one rigger brush here. The rigger brush does not hold a lot of paint, so you usually have to go over that uh, those branches you know, at least one one more time but it's it's fine and you just want to be real loose with this to make these kind of curvy twisty branches i am using the entire brush at the start of the branch and i lift and relieve some of that pressure as i get closer to the top I grabbed a size zero rigger brush for those smaller branches. Going lighter towards the end of each of those branches. Just not loading my brush up as much and dipping this size zero brush in water. So using the paint that is still in the belly of that brush, which isn't much at all. Now I'm just gonna dab some of the excess paint off of the trunk and some of those branches with a clean piece of crumpled up toilet paper. 
and I'm using my card or you could use your nail and I'm just adding some texture by scraping out some of the paint. Scraping out some random little bits here and there. I don't know, some just pieces of branches and odds and ends. The card is great for this. The paint is still wet and I can just easily scrape some of that out just to give the tree a bit more character. To add leaves to our tree, I'm just gonna make sure this jumbo round brush or mop brush is nice and dry. It's damp, it's seen better days as you can see. And I will dip it in just, just the tips into a little bit of clean water, just a little bit. And I'm gonna start off with some raw sienna, sienna, excuse me. Always start with the lightest colors. Here a little bit of what would be lemon yellow in a traditional set. And I'm taking the side of this brush and I'm just kind of rubbing it along those branches gently. It's always best to start with a small amount of paint to just test the waters before just going all in and um, it can get out of hand quickly. <laughs> so I like that color for a base color for the leaves. So I am going to allow myself a bit more freedom here. I am going to switch over now to my, I think this is a size medium. Yes, it's a size medium hockey brush. And I am using kind of an olivey green and the side of the brush, the corner here, and I'm just kind of rubbing gently, very gently in some leaves. Remember to leave space. We want to see some of that background showing through. We don't want to completely cover the tree. Start off small and build up from there. I don't have too much paint on this brush, but these hockey brushes hold a lot of water and so they hold a lot of paint. Now I'm using the tip of this brush just to put in some finer, more delicate leaves on the ends of the branches. I am being very, very, very gentle here. I'm taking just a touch of that Payne's Gray while this paint is still wet and I am dabbing it in close to the trunk of the tree. It's a little blue, but that's all right. It will blend up nicely. If you'd like, you can use a very dark green. If you have a nice dark green, that would be great. I just... I don't know. I just wanted to try out the Payne's Gray. Adding in a bit of that darker green. Just the tip of my brush. Putting in some leaves on the ends of those branches there. And I'm going to come in with some clean toilet paper crumpled up and just dab some of the excess off. I went a little crazy there. And just dry it off. Now I'm taking a medium round brush and I am dabbing into this what would be equivalent to lemon yellow. And I am gonna splatter. So my brush had uh, 
good amount of water in it. Saturated that brush with the lemon yellow and I'm just adding in some splatters on this dry paper onto that tree and some of the flowers. A few extra splatters, you know, they never hurt. <laughs> I'm going a little aggressive here, just want to bring in some light. And with that same yellow, I am just going to add just a few more lighter leaves on the ends of those branches. You could use a round brush for this, that would be fine. I just am accustomed to using this hockey brush four leaves. I just really like the the effect that I get. And there you have it, just a simple mountain scene. I hope you enjoyed this. Till next time, bye.